Hey everybody, Brian Boyle here, and welcome back to uh, to the Mesh Tongue. This is episode 85, and it's Sunday, so hope all are well and uh, that you're having a fantastic day. The uh, the sun's back out in uh, in Utah, so this is great. Uh, hey, keep those questions, comments coming in to Brian at Company Five. That's the number 5k.com, and that's Brian with an I, B-R-I-A-N, and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you as, as quick as possible. Today I want to talk to you about uh, something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, um, and uh, it's uh, it's obviously something that uh, you know most of us that are runners will experience at some time, uh, sometimes multiple times, and we've we've kind of addressed this in, in previous episodes, but we've never really talked about specifically um, use of like medications and specific opioids, um, you know, to calm your pain. Um, <clears throat> the reason why this is so near and dear is, is you know, U Utah has a ridiculously high epidemic of opioid overusage. Um, and when we say epidemic, it's not that it's necessarily overusage that, you know, everyone's having pain. Uh, people are using them for the wrong reasons. They're using them to kind of escape. They're using them to, uh, to, to kind of forget about things, to get away from, from their life. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and if you look at it in that perspective, quite oftentimes those people are, are missing out on the rest of their life. Now, are a lot of runners taking these things? Well, absolutely, there are. There's uh, there's people that uh, that run for exercise uh, that are taking opioids uh, because of the fact that they uh, you know they were prescribed them, or somebody says, hey, you you know you, I have some extra, you need to try this. Um, you know, you're having some pain, whatever it may be. And in reality, we've kind of stepped over the things like ibuprofens and, and uh, Tylenols and, and such. Uh, you know, in, in that realm of why are we using these? Now, again, I don't prescribe medication, so this is this is more or less advice and looking for information. Uh, so this is informational purposes only. What I mean by informational purposes only is that you know look for the information on your own, talk to your doctor about this, you know, figure out what you're having, uh, you know, if you're having issues with pain, um, but be aware that there's an addictive quality to uh, opioids and that the 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 tolerance buildup is what becomes addictive, okay? So the pill, you need more of it. Um, you need more and more to have the same effect. Well, when you have more and more in your system, the withdrawal symptoms, okay, become that much greater. When the withdrawal symptoms become that much greater, you do anything to avoid having to go into those withdrawal symptoms, okay? So when you withdraw, that's when you realize that it was an addictive substance. Now. Is that to say that all opioids are bad? Absolutely not. Okay, some people need them. If you need them, take them as prescribed. But for all intents and purposes, don't overuse them. Don't go selling them to the neighbor or to the, the kid down the street, to, um, you know, or to the, the person down the block for 45 bucks a pill, you know, whatever it may be. Um, you know, use them as prescribed and use them only as long as you need them. Okay, use them only as long as you need them. Now, with that being said, we know there's an addictive part of that. We know that there's withdrawal part of that. Okay, we know that they're good. There's bad to it. Okay, it's also good and bad to the over-the-counter things. All right, so you have to be careful when taking ibuprofen and Tylenol. Why would you take ibuprofen versus Tylenol? Well, ibuprofen has an anti-inflammatory quality that Tylenol does not. Okay, uh, so your acetaminophen does not have anti-inflammatory, it has anti-fever, has anti-pain, but it does not have an anti-inflammatory. The ibuprofens have an anti-inflammatory. Problem with the anti-inflammatory, okay, is if you are exercising and you are taking doses of this, what you're doing is you're basically putting your body into a stalemate. Your body's trying to break down in order to condition itself. Okay, we go through muscle, uh, and when you go through muscle breakdown, we go through um, a little bit of micro tearing in the muscles, bleeding. When that happens, the muscle repairs itself, it comes back stronger. If you take ibuprofen, if you take an anti-inflammatory, outside of say icing, okay, which can be an external anti-inflammatory, but something is systemic that is you know, an anti-inflammatory, what you end up doing then is that you end up reducing the body's ability to repair itself naturally and inhibiting this new muscle growth, this muscle change, if you will, hypertrophy, uh, conditioning effect, and so on. So, you know, small dosage, short periods of time, not too bad. If you're taking, you know, five, six, eight ibuprofen a day over extended periods of time and you're wondering why you're not improving or that things are getting worse, that's probably the reason. Now, 
What do we know about uh, about pain meds? Um, you know, we know about pain meds is that uh, certain pain meds will only have an effect for about three to four months. After that, we don't have an idea as to how you know that, that there's no conclusive evidence that shows these sorts of things actually continue to work. Uh, you know, so you have to be really careful. Go into everything again, as we always talk about, with a plan. Use external things like tens units, ice, heat, um, you know, stretching, rolling, going and getting uh, you know body uh, body work done, uh, soft tissue body work done. Those sorts of things that are conservative that don't rely on the medicinal or the medication to be taken, all right, for an extended period of time. You're going to have a much longer and lasting effect anyway. Taking care of the actual muscles, you know, muscle relaxers. People come in and say, "Oh, I took this muscle relaxer." The, the problem is that you can't take a muscle relaxer specifically for the bicep. We don't have a blue one for the biceps, a green one for the quadricep, uh, you know, a a pink one for the calf, uh, you know, a purple one for the foot. It, it doesn't happen. It what it does is it literally makes Brian go. All right, it makes the whole being just wiped out. The reason being that it's white, that you are now wiped out, is so that the muscles, in theory, should relax. Downside is you can't function. All right, so if you have muscle spasms and things, who doesn't? I mean, we have these from time to time. We've talked about some other things like magnesium, sodium, um, fluid volume with cramps and such. But sometimes you get these muscle spasms, and people would be tempted to take muscle relaxers. There are specific reasons why you would do that if it's an acute situation. Um, but if it's an overuse, it's not going to have an impact. All right, you need to get rid of the the, the symptom causing agent, um, not necessarily just the fact that now you've got this symptom. So, what do we, what are we concerned about? Obviously, uh, the addictive nature of opioids. If you can avoid them, avoid them at all costs. Um, you know, there are more uh, more opioid deaths. Um, you know, right now than, uh, than basically car accidents uh, and cancers. I mean, especially in Utah, this is, this is just ridiculous. I'm not sure what it's like where you live, but, uh, um, you know, by all means, it's getting worse and worse. Uh, you know, if you look at heroin versus opioids, it's the same thing, folks. You know, people are like, oh, I don't take heroin. Oh, I've never taken heroin, but, you know, I'm taking the Oxycontin, Oxycodone, uh, you know, Percocet on a daily basis, and you go, you, you might as well have just shot up with the heroin, except that it's going to be a little longer delay. Um, so if you need them, you need them. Great. Take them. Have a plan. Have a plan to get off them. Work with your doctor. All right. Make sure that your, you know, your doctor is basically, uh, you know, taking care of you. Uh, if you can use the ibuprofen, Tylenol, those sorts of things, again, talk to your doctor before you take anything like that, because again, you can have harmful effects. Make sure, make sure that you're aware of the reasons why you're taking them. The anti-inflammatory, if you need it, the ibuprofen is the thing. Acetaminophen for pain control. Um, you know, again, if uh, if you are not needing an anti-inflammatory, you're just looking for pain control. The acetaminophen is going to probably be your best bet. Again, informational purposes only. Hope you find some value in this. This is the Mesh Tongue episode 85. Uh, check us out at runpainless.com. I'll be back again tomorrow, Monday. Yay, Monday! Everyone's just like, yeah. If you're not if you're not looking forward to Mondays, you need to find a new thing to do. You need to find your passion. But uh, hey, anyway, uh, this is episode 85 of Mesh Tongue. Brian Boyle here. As I always say, don't go hurting yourself to come back, but share this with your friends, family, training partners. I'll see you again tomorrow. All right, take care.